Hi there. I'm here today with Casey and April, who are Euromastix lizards. And Euromastix lizards are one of the best pet reptiles, pet lizards at the very least, in the world. The Euromastix gets a score of 3.2 out of 5, and that's going to come down to our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. Let's start with handleability. When it comes to handleability, we give the Euromastix a four out of five. And you can see, they're pretty awesome. When they're very, very warm, they can be pretty active. But generally speaking, they'll hang out with you for a while, very much like a bearded dragon, but not quite the same. Really pretty mellow and laid back though, which is excellent. They can have some sharp little nails, which are really just for holding on. They're not gonna use them to scratch you. They're also not inclined to bite or even whip with this tail, which this tail, I mean, it actually doesn't really hurt when they whip you with it, but it looks like it would because it's covered in spikes and they are actually relatively sharp. That's their main defense mechanism, which actually dictates a lot about how they are to handle because unlike a bearded dragon, which likes to be up high all the time, the Euromastix actually likes to be near somewhere where it can wedge itself. Their main defense in the wild is to wedge themselves like this kind of into a tight area. And then they inflate their body, leaving only this spiky tail to grab onto, which is not particularly appetizing. And so generally speaking, they kind of like to nestle in somewhere a little bit more than a lot of other lizards. And they're also a little bit more nervous with handling than some other lizards because they do need to be near a safe refuge all the time in the wild, and so that is what is instinctively part of how they behave. They are, generally speaking, though, very calm. They're sturdy lizards. You know, this is not a huge lizard, but it's a big enough lizard that a younger child can handle it as long as they're careful and not accidentally harm it, which is really wonderful. They're, they're kind of built like tiny little tanks, but they've got a really soft skin, which is really nice. I think this size is one of the most perfect sizes that a lizard can be, especially when it comes to handling, because they're big enough that they're tough, but they're still small enough that they're not going to tear you up with their nails, that they're not difficult to wrangle like the tegu or monitor lizards can be. They don't drop their tails. You know how important that is to me, that they can't drop their tails and they cannot drop them. They can't lose them any more than your dog can, and I love that about these guys. Another thing that I really like about them is they've got a very dry stool, and uh, it seems like something that wouldn't matter, but should the worst happen and they decide to poop on you, it's really not a big deal, whereas with a bearded dragon, it's more of a big deal. When it comes to care, we give the Euromastix a three out of five, and one of the biggest factors that decided that score is the fact that they need a ton of heat. They need a very hot basking spot, and actually the whole enclosure needs to be a lot warmer than most lizards require. And that means you're going to need some supplies. You're going to need basking lamps and basking bulbs, which generate a lot of heat. You're also going to need UVB bulbs for these guys to keep them healthy so they don't get metabolic bone disease. And you're going to need a temperature gun in order to make sure that the temperatures in your enclosure are right. So. Those are all things you're going to need to buy, and we've actually got links for them down in the description, and we appreciate it when you use those links, because it does help our channel out. These guys are going to need a fresh supply of vegetables, actually. Their, their main diet is going to be made up of two things, which are plant matter, leaves like collard greens, mustard greens, a little bit of kale, but I wouldn't go overboard on that because it can bind calcium, but a, a variety of different greens is ideal and so you're going to need that and they also eat a lot of seeds like lentils even bird seed in fact and we're going to talk about this later one of the best substrates for them is just to keep them on seeds like bird seed and i really like that about them because they can eat as much of that as they want to and it's not going to cause any problems that's awesome some species and some individuals within the species are going to want to eat some insects, so occasionally offering insects can be a good idea if your Euromastix takes them. If not, you don't need to get insects at all, and that's awesome. The enclosure that you're going to need for a Euromastix is going to be large, because they're a big, active lizard, and they need a wide temperature gradient. They need it to be very, very hot in some areas and considerably cooler 
in other areas and that's really difficult to achieve in a smaller enclosure. So it needs to be a bigger enclosure, but these are enclosures that are commercially available. So you will be able to purchase one. You don't necessarily have to build one yourself, though you can. The size of the enclosure that you're going to need is going to depend principally on the age and the size of the Euromastics that you're keeping. Not all Euromastic species are the same size and so there is some variability there. Another thing that you're going to need are places for them to hide. And these guys in the wild live on rocky outcrops. So rocks actually are a really good cage feature, especially things like tile or rock under their basking area that can heat up and, and get that proper basking temperature for you. But you need to be careful that they're not placed precariously because they are going to be digging under them. They're going to be inflating them and changing the position of a lot of these things. And if any of them could fall, they could crush and kill your lizard. So you need to be very, very careful about that. As I was referencing before, one of the best substrates for them are going to be seeds, like bird seed. Uh, millet seed is another great one that you can keep them on. Some people have great success keeping them on sand. And generally speaking, I don't think sand is a great idea for lizards. They seem to do okay on this. Uh, a lot of people have no problems, but I think bird seed or millet seed is a much better alternative. If you keep them on seeds because they eat seeds, they're going to be eating their own substrate. It's like being in Willy Wonka's factory. These lizards get their water actually from their diet, from the food that they eat. And so generally speaking, they don't need to drink, possibly not at all in their entire lifetime. If it seems like they're not thriving, it can be a good idea to offer them a little bit of water to drink. You, I've I understand you can even place a little bit of water on their skin and they can absorb it through their skin, which is different than most reptiles. And so occasional access to water may be a good idea, but really only on an as needed basis. Generally speaking, they don't need a water bowl in their enclosure. So definitely a frequent availability, probably daily would be ideal of leafy greens so that they can stay hydrated and properly nourished. And you know, really one of the biggest downsides to care, and this isn't a big downside, but care does vary some depending on the exact species that you get. And so make sure that you know what species of Euromastix you're looking for, which one you have, so that you're giving the appropriate care for that species. When it comes to hardiness, we give the Euromastix a score of four out of five. Look at that little dive. So guys, if they're captive bred, are little tanks. And even wild-caught individuals seem to do okay, but I don't recommend wild-caught for the reasons that we've actually covered before in this video. So check that out if you want to see why we think captive bred is so much better than wild-caught. But with respect to captive bred individuals, they're going to be really hardy. Really, probably about as hardy as a lizard can be as long as your enclosure is right. Don't get them too cold. Also, don't bake them. Like I said, they like it very hot, so that's challenging to do, but it can be done and you can kill a lizard pretty fast that way, so be careful that your temperatures are right. Too much humidity can actually be an issue for them, and that's less of an issue, as I understand it, for captive bred individuals that are raised at that humidity level, but these guys come from very, very dry deserts, and so they're just not used to excessive amounts of humidity, so that's something to be careful of if you live in a place that has very high humidity. In general, though, these guys come from some of the most inhospitable environments on planet Earth, some of the driest deserts there are, and they thrive there. They're hardy, solid, solid lizards. When it comes to availability, we give these guys a two out of five. And they're becoming more available, I think, as captive bred individuals as time goes on. So a few years from now, that might seem preposterous because they are great pets and a lot of them are not that challenging to breed. So they will be coming around. The issue with them is they were so frequently brought in as imports not very long ago that not very many people started a breeding program. They were so available wild caught. Now a lot of those wild caught individuals are not so available. They're not being imported nearly as much as they used to be. And a lot of people are starting to get into the breeding of Euromastix. But right now it's a little bit difficult to find one. You're not going to stumble into them in every pet store. You may have to look for a while in order to find one online but you will be able to find one. When it comes to the upfront costs, we give the Euromastix a three out of five. And this is gonna vary some based on the species and the color that you pick. Some Euromastix, and you can see these are wild type Euromastix and they are amazing. And there are some morphs and some localities that are just unbelievably colorful and gorgeous and you are gonna pay more for those. 
but generally speaking, the Lizard is moderately expensive, but really not that bad. The enclosure that you're going to need for them is not cheap, but it's affordable. It's, it's going to be fairly large, but not super large. The lighting is going to be pretty expensive for lighting. You're going to need a lot of hot, hot bulbs. You're going to need the UVB lighting. So it's about as expensive as lighting can be. Everything else for these guys is very, very reasonable. And that's why overall, the Euromastix gets a score of 3.2 out of 5. I just love these guys. Uh, they're as good as a lizard can be. If, if the Euromastix is your thing, it is a great, great pet lizard. Just make sure you get one that's captive bred and you're going to be a happy camper. As always, like and subscribe. And we hope to see you real soon. There's a little tail whip for you. You all right? Oh, you're a pretty beast. That is not polite. Don't walk on your neighbor's head. I love them. So they eat seeds. Mm -hmm. Yet seeds are their substrate. Uh huh. Which is marvelous. So they eat their substrate? Yes, they do. That's crazy. What? That doesn't make any sense. That's like if I lived in... Cheetos. Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like that.